I'm Jonathan Agnew. Welcome to the Test Match Special Podcast on an attritional day where Dom Sibley ground down the West Indies bowlers. That after early disruption when Joffre Archer was dropped from the squad after breaking the bio-bubble protocol. More on that with the England coach Chris Silverwood in a moment. But first, the thoughts of Michael Vaughan and Carlos Brathwaite. The TMS Podcast from BBC Radio 5 Live. So we'll begin our review of the day, an eventful day in in some ways, uh, this uh, opening day of the second Test match between England and West Indies. West Indies, of course, lead in the series 1-0, so vital that England win this match. West Indies won the toss, they put England in. It was very drizzly and cloudy and play began an hour and a half late. And it was like, like that for much of the day. I don't think the West Indies had the best day with the ball. I think there were some pretty tired limbs out there from all, all the effort they put in to that first Test match, which of course they won. Rory Burns and Dom Sibley got virtually through to lunch before Burns was out to the last ball of that session. He effectively just missed a straight ball from Chase and was LBW for 15. So that was 29 for one. There was 14 overs bowled in that, uh, that session because of the delayed start. First ball after lunch, Chase continues his over. And Zach Crawley turned the very first ball just around the corner where Jason Holder had positioned himself at leg slip. He took a straightforward catch. Crawley got a first baller. So that was 29 for two. Joe Root and Sibley took the score up to 81 for three. In the 32nd over, Root just finds, trying to feel his way back into things for he launched into a, a drive wide of his off stump and he edged a catch to Holder off Joseph for 23. Sibley was dropped on 44, one of those difficult juggling catches at, uh, at short leg which never really went to hand but almost was caught in the arms he was properly dropped on 68 by Holder at second slip off the persevering Gabriel and Ben Stokes just played beautifully really very straight very calmly to reach 59 Sibley 86 from 253 balls and that's where we are as we uh, take a reflection on the day's play we'll get uh, Carlos in a second let's get Michael Vaughan's view first of all on what, what was a bit of a topsy-turvy rather strange sort of a, a day really all things considered yeah it, it, it's felt like a very long day um but full credit to the england side jason holder made the call this morning to to bowl first i i understood why um with the clouds around i think we all thought it was going to zip around and, and swing and seam it did enough it did enough for for the west indies to potentially have got a few wickets but the stubbornness of dom sibley at the top mm. of the order he just kind of put an anchor down said you're going to have to bowl a Jaffa to get me out he had a couple of pieces of fortune but you know, it, it, you know you only have to go back probably a year two years ago when we used to kind of criticise England for being so flamboyant allowing the opposing team into the game by rash shots uh, reckless uh, kind of decision making and the mentality not being right well this is completely the other end of the spectrum and I prefer this spectrum yes. end to the other end because what England have done today, they've just got themselves into the test match. They, they've not blown the West Indies away. And the West Indies know that they come out and get two or three quick ones in the morning. They're right back in it. But they've established a foundation. And that's what it's required. And, and also, as, a, as an opening batsman, just setting his way out. You know, he's not a kind of player that's going to crash it to the boundary. And I guess at times, with the way that he plays, it could be quite difficult for the the other batsmen. You know, the, the partnership kind of, because you're not getting all the strike all the time but he's a young player that uh, England have to stick with because if he can add one or two little areas of play on the offside if he can just work away of hitting it through the offside that little bit more particularly when the half volley comes and he can rotate the strike a little bit more so well, to the spinners that's a bit I agree in fact I think against all bowlers I mean I think I think he could push yeah push and run push and run and just be busy that way yeah if he can bring that to his game you know mm. he's clearly very stubborn he's clearly got the right mentality to about long periods of time exactly what you require in test match cricket he's now giving himself a great platform to go and get the daddy hundred you yeah. know the, 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 the granddaddy hundred to set England on, on their way to winning a test match to win test matches you have to get a lot of runs and England have put themselves in a great position to go and get a big first inning score it's a bit surprised, Carlos, that the West Indian bowlers didn't didn't go around the wicket and, and perhaps get the ball up under his armpit a bit. We know that he's he, he, he does get out, caught down the leg side leg, leg side a bit, but there wasn't we didn't see any of that. Just in general, I would have loved to see um, a spell of four, six, eight overs where to just say, you know what, mid off and mid on, you guys can sit down. Um, we can set two men back on the hook, a uh, square leg just in front potentially even a third man depending on how the bounce is and we can go into the ribs whether around or over um it just felt like more of the same more mm. of the same more of the same and with weary legs more of the same became a lot easier as the day went on 
um, Amida may have just counter counter the argument of actually trying to get the ball whizzing around the nose. But it, it, you talk about Dom Sibley and the job that he's done, batting ugly runs and being attritional. We need someone with the ball to do the same. It's not going to look pretty all the time. You're not going to bring back the ball through bat and pad or seam it away, nick to slip all the time. Sometimes you need just running hard, running, do the hard yards, the the boring job of just bowling fast and into the wicket. Um, you never know. You get hit for a couple of boundaries between fine leg and square leg, but you get a top edge or you get a glove down the leg side or fend off or the one ball you do pitch up. Um, because the batsman feet are back waiting for the short ball, you get a nick or a wicket and then you open one end and you go back to your lines and lengths, you down the channel. But it just felt real samey samey. Um, and for me, it looks as though the bodies aren't quite holding up as well as they thought they would. And as a result, the mindset has been more of get through the day rather than try yeah. to blast them out. It's a big call to keep the same team back-to-back -back tests, keep the same fast bowlers, especially when they've worked hard and have had such little match fitness behind them. It, it, and, and then to, and to put the side in as well on the first day, it, it, it's, it's, it's all, all adds up to a big call for hold of that. Yeah, it's tough, but when you put yourself in your West Indies shoes for potential first series victory since 1980. Yeah. Oh, the temptations there. I'm not it? even sure if I was born. Depends on which, which uh, month in the year it was in 1988. Um, the, the smell of series victory, yeah. they want it. And the sacrifice is that three of the fast bowlers, four of the fast bowlers need to go out there and run in and bowl hard was the best thing for the team at the moment. And in their opinion, it was to stay unchanged which West Indies haven't had the luxury of doing for a while. Um, and it is, we need to bowl first and get early wickets. And yeah, I mean, it is what the team has needed. So spare thought for fast bowlers. Um, I'm very sympathetic with the effort to put in in the first test, the long drive the day after, mm. um, the overhead conditions in the two days before the test. Um, but yeah, it's what the team needs. And the team needed West Indies fast bowlers to run in and bowl hard. Um, put the feet up tonight, get an ice bath, a massage, whatever. And that's exactly what they've done. They haven't done it as well as they could have, but kudos to them for trying and do what the team needs. Roston Chasey. <laughs> he keeps getting English batsmen out, doesn't he? Well, yeah, and particularly Rory Burns, you know, the, the non-spinning off-spinner. You know, he, he should really be aware of that delivery now because he's been out to that delivery to Roston Chase before in the past. So... You know, Rory Burns will be disappointed. You're going to go to Zach Crawley, first ball, leg slip. Again, just a little bit of inexperience shown there from Zach Crawley. And that, that's what Test Match Cricket is. You know, a few days ago, we were waxing lyrical about his hmm. tremendous 76 of how well he played, Roston Chase. Four days later, he's out first ball. So that's uh, just a little bit of a level up for him. That At this level, you cannot switch off, switch, just arrive and think you're going to switch on straight away. You really have to think about your game all the time. Um, I've been fascinated with, with, with the day's play because it, it's been what I would describe as a day's play that I would have seen in the 80s. You know, this is Test Match Cricket from back in the day, but this is what I believe Test Match Cricket should be played like. We've you got know, five days. Yeah, yeah. I, I think in the first innings, if you've been given the chance and the opposition have, have, have won the toss and said, right, you can have a bat, you've got the chance to bat in a, in a boring fashion and in a fashion that can... Uh, at times, it looked like you're going to put a few people to sleep, but that's fine because you've got five days to do what you need to do is to get enough runs in the first innings to put them under uh, immense pressure. And I believe on this wicket, the likes of Don Best, the seamers that England have picked, you know, Sam Curran's left arm over. I, I think they'll have enough to create opportunities because you've seen the way Jason Holder's bowled. I mean, Jason Holder's bowled 20 overs, not for 33, mm. and he's beaten the outside edge on many, many occasions. And he swung the ball at the end. Yeah, I, I still yeah. think there's going to be enough out there. And England have given themselves a great position to go on and get that big score and put the West Indies under huge pressure. This new ball is, a, is, is important, isn't it, for West Indies tomorrow? Because, I mean, you know, they are, they're still in control of, a, of, of, of the run rate. And, and if they can whip three out tomorrow with that. Yeah, because, I mean, if you, if you handed this um, scorecard and you haven't watched the game, you think, oh, okay, game is in the balance. And from the West Indies, it's probably good that, you know, we haven't been at our best. We know there's more left in the tank, or at least we hope so, physically. <laughs> Definitely skill-wise, there's a lot more left in the tank. Um, but the game hasn't gotten away. 
England were 246 for three or 249 for three in the first test. Lost five for 30. Um, with the second new ball, runs come, but it's potential for collapse as well. So, I mean, the boys in the dressing room will not be happy at all with the way they would have bowled. But when you do peel back the layers and you see, okay, this is where we at, how do we move forward? They have to be smiling, thinking we can't bowl as badly as we did today. <laughs> and if we put in an improved performance and we get some quick wickets, we can still roll England for under 300. What will they be doing to them? Because it, this, looked, this looked tired, didn't they? I mean, it's, it's one thing just to bowl badly. You've had a bad day. <clears throat> but actually... There were some pretty weary legs, I think, out there. So what, what, what will they be doing to them downstairs? I'd like someone to roll a couple beds into the dressing room so they don't even have to move and walk across the field. Yeah. They do look tired. All you can do, really, um, ice baths, massages. Put your feet up. Um, I mean, there's not much you can do. As Before you look around twice, um, it will be morning time again. They'll be asked to come in and do it all over again. This is where the mentality... Um, takes a big part your legs may not want to move but you aren't going to die just run in and bowl and there are some strong characters in that dressing room and I know that Jason is going to be very important tomorrow for inspiration and inspiration alone just to get the boys up get the mind flowing hopefully the legs will follow and Find we can see energy. an improved performance we need to see one with the ball this is the TMS podcast from BBC Radio 5 Live. The players had travelled up from uh, the Aegeus Bowl to uh, here, Emirates Old Trafford, most of them in a straight line and directly, but we now know that one didn't. And Joffre Archer popped home uh, to his flat in Brighton en route, which does break all the protocols that the players are under. I think it's right that we should explain uh, not without too much detail, but these, these protocols that are in place and that particularly for the players, they are very, very restrictive indeed. They are the, the, real, <coughs> excuse me, the real inner bubble, if you like, um, and they are very tight, very tight. Uh, outside of that, so the, in other words, the environment that, that I am working in and other broadcasters, uh, not quite so. We were allowed to go home uh, between the test matches as long as we kept pretty low profile and didn't put ourselves out and about and so on. But there is, the, the team and both teams and the management and the officials are very, very tightly controlled as to what they can do. And one of those things they cannot do is to, is to go home. Uh, anyway, we've got, it only ha must have uh, emerged late last night because of course Archer was named in the team yesterday afternoon. And then we woke up this morning to these quotes. He says, I'm extremely sorry for what I've done. I've put not only myself, but the whole team and management in danger. I fully accept the consequences of my actions and I want to sincerely apologize to everyone in the biosecure bubble. It deeply pains me to be missing the test match, especially with the series poised. I feel I've let both teams down. And again, I am sorry. So he is now, well, presumably in a room in the hotel opposite here. He's got to be in quarantine now for five days. He has to pass two COVID tests in that time before he can, uh, he can resume. But um, I don't know, what do you, what, what do you think? Well, he, he, he's a silly, silly lad. Um, you've just mentioned the, the protocols of the teams. I look at the West Indies, what they've given up to come here. You know, when did they arrive? June the 8th from the Caribbean. They've come to a, a country that's been hit by COVID more than most. You know, it has to be a risk on their behalf for what they've given up. You know, a couple of the players decided not to travel again. I understand that. Uh, they've had to live at Old Trafford for two and a half weeks looking out onto a cricket ground. I'm sure they'd have loved to go into Manchester. I'm sure they'd have loved to go and see some friends. Then get on a bus down to the GS Bowl again, look out over a cricket ground for a few days. Um, and then for one England player uh, to, to break that protocol when he'd been away from home a couple of weeks. You know, I also look at players in the England team. You know, we've got kids that haven't break, broken the... Jimmy Anderson's two girls live two miles away from here. Yes. You know, how tempting would it have been for Jimmy Anderson to just nip home to, to see his kids? A, a number of the, the players have families and, and kids at home that they must have been tempted on Monday to think, that journey from Southampton up to Manchester, should we just nip home and, and see, see our loved ones? And, you know, Joffre decided to go all the way down to Hove. Um, England are 1-0 down in a series. Um, what do you need at Old Trafford? On a pitch generally, it's quite hard. You need pace. What are England going to have this week? No pace. 
So not only is you know is he broken the protocols of what was required, you know he's really going to affect the England team's formation for the the pitch that they're going to be playing on this week. You know, again, you go back a week ago. What did England do? They they left out a legend in Stuart Broad for possibly Joffre Archer. I'm pretty sure it was Joffre that may have missed out if Stuart Broad had played. Um, you know, so I, I would think the management will have, will feel very let down. I think what's very important. He, he has broken rules and he'll get you know criticised. But you know, if he's going to be sat in his room for five days on his own, I hope he's not left alone. I know that's. I hope he's just not left to kind of be sat in his room and yes he's, he's, he's well, a young player he's going to be himself. well he is but I hope, I hope, I hope yeah. there's communication yeah, I get, what, I get you know what you're saying yeah, but no one, no one can go in there yeah I, I hope there's, there's a, an aspect of people realising that yeah he's made a mistake but you've got to look after the well-being of him because yeah he, I agree he'll be, he'll be watching it on the news he's going to get absolutely cascaded from all quarters and you know understandably but you've also got to look after him you yeah. know because he's a young, young kid who's made a a silly mistake and England will miss him because I mean that, that spell that he bowled on the fifth day was Joffre back to Lords what we saw last year against Steve Smith um, yeah he's a silly lad yeah. I have to say and, and, and what I will think going forward is I know he's got five days I don't think they'll play him next week you know I think the, there needs to be a little bit of a, a kickback in terms of Joffre to not realise that he can make these mistakes and all of a sudden he just walks straight back into the England team next week with him out of competition he might have to wait a few test matches to get his place back. Do you know what surprises me, Michael? I'll get, I'll get Carlos to come in a second as well. But what surprises me is that ev- everything is so rigorous again, and here we are, this is a different bio-bubble, and we're, mm. we're on the second bubble. So we're, we're not in the team bubble, although I'm surprised to see, actually, that I'm sharing the same floor uh, as, as some of the team. But they're kind of one end of the hotel and I'm at the other. But we're, we're a bit closer from that perspective than we were... Uh, in Southampton, but again, it is, it is so tight, so restricted for the players. Why aren't they on a bus? Why aren't they put on a bus at Southampton and just transported here? If if there is this completely un- and necessary level of restriction, why are the players just left to drive their own way up and stop where they want, presumably, if they need a cup of coffee or fill the car up or, or well, go to the toilet? I mean, it, why aren't they on a bus? Well, I, I think the reason for that is I, I think they, they put trust in the player. I think they put trust in the player and the management. You've got to remember there's a number of coaches as well in and around that England bubble that would have had to do the same. Look, Glenn Chappell's the bowling coach. Again, he's found the live close by just down the road. I'm sure yep. he would have had a temptation. But um, I guess they could easily have been dropped off at the Aegeus Bowl. I mean, cars could have been taken to the house, dropped off at the Aegeus Bowl, get on a bus here. I, I would suggest that the next journey that they make, um, uh, there may be a bus I required. <laughs> Yeah, it just it just seems odd, doesn't it? Because well, when you think they've paid for the expense of a, a charter plane to bring the West Indies from the Caribbean, I, I'm pretty sure they could have paid for a chauffeur or two to get the players down to the Jews. Well, but I think they've put the trust in the player. You know, 99.9% of, of the people involved have done the right thing. They've got to Old Trafford, they haven't stopped off. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, um, we always talk about one one mistake and it's just one individual that could break the kind of uh, little bit of relaxation for all the teams. So everything's going to become more strict, and particularly when they travel again to the GS Bowl, um, I would probably think they might be going on a bus. Yeah, It's interesting because we, we all have these tracking devices around our necks. Um, so literally, yeah, I mean, we, people, they know where we are, but I mean, you wouldn't be wearing his accreditation. I mean, would it, does it work outside? I don't know. It, it makes you wonder about Big Brother and all that. But we all have these tracking devices on. But, but I guess if the tracking device works so well, surely they'd have picked it up before yeah. last night. You know, when he was announced in well, the third true. scene, you know, th- this happened on Monday when he nipped home to, to Hove. Yes. You'd have thought that would have kind of... Some sort of alarm would have gone off. Woo, woo. <laughs> Joffre's in Hove. In, woo, woo. Deep in some bunker somewhere. Well, I don't know, but they, it's... It, it, yeah, if I'm looking at my tracking device, there's a new level of scrutiny now. <laughs> Carlos, what do you reckon to all this? Then? What, what do the West Indian players feel about this? I think it's a really good point Michael made, you know, the, the sacrifice that they have made to come here. Uh, you know, they haven't got the chance to nip off home, and, and, and I think they'll be a bit surprised that, that uh, the England players have done that. Yeah, if, I, if I'll be honest, I haven't really had a chance to get my head around it. And, um, yeah, for me, as a personal friend... Um, disappointed not only in what was done um, but obviously the scrutiny you'll get from the media I know there's been talk about 
before his attitude and his lazy, lazy fear way of going about things, um, which often discredits what he actually does on the field. For example, mm. the fifth day spell that almost um, won England the game. Um, and for me personally, I just want to see his cricket do the talking more so than, you know, concerns about, which I think are misplaced, concerns about his attitude. That's just the character um, that is Jaffa Archer, the tweeting, the social media, the quirky posts, the game playing. That is Jaffa Archer. And as a cricketer myself, there are things about me outside of cricket that not everyone would appreciate or agree with. Um, and some people look to cricketers to set this example um, in life. And, you know, I want my child to look up to you. Well, he's not there for your son or daughter to look up to. Um, he's there to live his life and do what he can do best. That being said, doesn't make an excuse for what he's done. Um, so forget, forget my ramble a bit. Um, it's just disappointing for me as a personal friend, um, not only what has happened, but the backlash that he'll get from it. And when I woke up this morning, I actually messaged him. Um, I don't expect him to respond today. I, I hope he lays low. Um, but yeah, I mean, reading the first set of correspondence on the internet, Joffre has breached the biosecure bubble straight away. Ping, 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 ping. People have been messaging me. What did Joffrey do? What did Joffrey do? Did he do this? Did he do that? And without me trying to sound disrespectful and accepting of what he did, there are a lot worse things that he could have done outside of popping home. Do you think it's on route. because it's the first time that it's happened that they just kind of nailed the first person to step out and they've made an example of him? No, they definitely they have to. Yeah. Um, because what is a very possible opportunity is that he stops home for whatever reason, interacts with friends or family or whatever they would have interacted with someone like the market would have gotten it, he would have brought it into the, bio, the biosecure bubble and then someone from Barbados who leaves an island that is safe from COVID or relatively safe then takes it back and infects a nation so it's a very serious transgression um, but how it was reported it is more of carelessness, hmm. but it seemed as though it was... I really got to choose my words wisely. Um, <laughs> oh, but, 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 but it was deliberate. I mean, it's 60-odd miles mm -hmm. in the other direction. So it isn't something where I'm passing home, I'll pop in. I mean, he, he, he deliberately made the decision to go home. Yeah, agreed. And that's what he said. It's a serious transgression. So anything that I say now, don't take away from the fact that it doesn't make sense. It is thing. But when you read someone has done something wrong, um, stealing a mint, and killing someone, both are two wrong things, but they're very different ends of the spectrum. So when you say he's breached the protocols and you leave it open-ended, then people yeah. start to think, oh, what has he done? Well, at least they've, I think mean, they had to say what, mm -hmm. what it was, didn't they? Because it, 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 it was, it was running right for a while. Wasn't, um, wasn't there a problem with Joffre joining up with the team? Well, he had to have a test. Pre, pre the he test, He wasn't mate. feeling was, well, yeah. Wasn't he a bit late? Wasn't there an issue around that time that... Well, he wasn't feeling well, so he had to have a test. Yeah. And so until he was clear, he, he couldn't join the, yeah. the bubble down in them. Um, yeah. But the it, it, wasn't, it wasn't him. It wasn't him. It was someone that was close to in him that wasn't feeling well, but it was nothing. But it was just mm. yeah. precautionary measure. But again, um, to, to show the magnitude of the wrong is easily... Hmm. Trans is easily transferred onto a player who takes it back home. But then when you report it, reporting Joff Archer made a stop home and as a result breached protocols and has been left out. It's very different to yeah. Joff Archer has breached the okay. biosecure bubble protocols and as a result is left out. Yeah. Like what has he done? Well they have they have they have now said that. This is the TMS podcast from BBC Radio Five Live. We can hear now from the England coach, Chris Silverwood, with Eleanor Oldroyd. Let's start with your verdict on this first day of this Test match. Yeah, I think it's been a, a good hard day's uh, Test cricket, to be honest. Obviously, we were put under pressure early on uh, by the West Indies, but I think the guys have shown a lot of spirit, a lot of courage, and fought their way into a good position here, so we've got to now capitalise on that tomorrow. If somebody had asked you to describe the Chris Silverwood 
way of playing test cricket. Is this exactly what you would have wanted? It is. I mean, I talked about this when, obviously, I came into the job. Joe and I sat down and how do we want to, you know, I mean, play the test cricket moving forward. And I think we've picked people to, to do the job that we're asking, really. And we've seen that sort of come to life. We saw that slowly come to life in New Zealand and then on to South Africa and to where we are now. I mean, it's an ongoing process, but uh, we'll keep working hard at it. I imagine you're very pleased with the way Dom Sibley has played today, but I imagine Zach Crawley must be frustrated with the way he got out. He, obviously, Zach is frustrated, but these things happen. You know, I mean, it's test cricket. It's not meant to be easy. And you know, I mean, every now and again, it's not going to be your day. But we know he's a fine player. We back him. He played beautifully in the last test match and he'll come good. Let's talk about what came out at breakfast time today about Joffre Archer. Um, how did you feel when you found out what had happened? It's obviously there's a, a frustration. Uh, the timing obviously wasn't great, uh, but equally as well, I understand that people do mis make mistakes. Um, part of my job is to, to empathise with that as well. Um, I mean, he's now got five days isolation in a hotel room, which is not going to be easy for him. Uh, and we've got to support him because he's a valuable member of our team. Uh, you know, I mean, he's well supported within the group and we'll make sure that we give him, you know, I mean, every bit of support we can really. What kind of things would you be doing to, to try and help him? Well, obviously speaking to him a lot. You know, I mean, the guys will rally around, phone him up, make sure he's all right, deliver his meals. Uh, so we've got all sorts we can be doing. Uh, but ultimately, I mean, he knows he's made a mistake and he's, I mean, he's very sorry for that. Uh, but equally, we've got to say thank you to the West Indies side for how they've responded as well. I mean, the integrity of this biosafe environment that we're in is obviously paramount in everybody's thoughts. Uh, and we've worked very hard. I mean, a lot of people have worked very hard to, to get international cricket back on. And um, obviously, there's an error in judgment. But uh, we'll work hard to make sure it doesn't happen again. But trust is such a big thing around this England team, about the one-day team as well. And we all saw what happened when Alex Hales broke the trust of, of Owen Morgan and the ODI team. How do the team feel around the way that Joffre has, in a way, broken their trust? Um, I think, obviously, a little bit disappointed. But at the same time, it's a, I think it's just a naive mistake, to be honest. Uh, like I say, an error is judgment. So I think the guys will rally around him. Uh, you know what I mean? He's, he's, an, he's a good man, is Joffre. So it's just he's made a bad decision, that's all. But we all do that in our walks of life, you know what I mean, wherever we are. Uh, so we'll rally around him and support him. Do you think he just didn't get it? Probably. Yeah. Is that something that you think you can imagine happening? I've got a feeling he's probably learned a lot in the last 24 hours, to be honest. So, you know what I mean? And it is something that will be spelled out to him as well, obviously. There's ongoing conversations uh, around various things with Ash. Obviously, I'll speak to Ash tonight as well. I think he will have learned a lot. Mm. Looking ahead to day two, um, what do you, th what's, what's, the, what's the plan? Are you going to keep tell them just to pick up where they've left off tonight? Absolutely much of the same. Uh, you know, we can take this as deep as we can get as many miles into the legs as the West, and West Indies bowlers as we can. And then when it comes to bowling, uh, you know, I mean, try and get as many balls in a good area, really. I mean, it's not rocket science, but we've obviously it's, it's a skill and one that we're working very hard to, to become good at. But first and foremost, more runs on the board. And the bowling attack that you wouldn't necessarily have thought you'd start with, at, you know, when you, when you named the team last night. But actually, are you quite happy with the variation that you're going to get? I am. I think we've got good variation in there. I mean, the great thing for me at the moment is you look down the list of people that could come in and we've got some fine bowlers in there. You know, I mean, people with good experience, people that have been successful at this level as well and taken big wickets in you know, I mean, tough times for us. So I've got no problem with the guys that are in there. I've got every faith in them. Thanks so much for your time, Chris. No problem. Thank you.